We've seen Jupiter, we've seen Mars, and we've even seen Neptune from JWST. But now it's time for Uranus. The brand new image of the second ice giant in the solar system is absolutely stunning. We can see weather, the atmosphere, moons, and something that you might not have realized. But Uranus has rings. This new image from JWST was just a 12 minute exposure, taken on February 6th, 2023. The telescope used its near infrared camera NERCAM to image the planet. And this really shows off the ability of JWST to image in incredible resolution and to do it incredibly fast. Most importantly, this image is awesome. You might be surprised that it looks so much better than the image we saw of Neptune and its rings at the end of 2022. But that is for a couple of reasons. Firstly, while Neptune is a bit more massive than Uranus, Uranus and its rings are about twice the size of the Neptunian ring system, and it's a lot easier to image larger things. Secondly, Uranus is a lot closer to us, also making it easier to see in detail, and making it look a lot bigger in the telescope's mirrors. It's not quite the queen of ring systems yet though, Saturn still has that, as we can see in this comparison, which is to scale. The closest Uranus ever gets to Earth is about 1.6 billion miles, while the closest Neptune ever gets is about 2.7 billion miles, so an extra billion miles or so away. In this new Uranian image, we can see a decent amount of detail too. The obvious things in this close-up are the rings. The press release tells us that we can see 11 of Uranus's 13 rings in this image. Honestly, I think you do have to have pretty good eyesight to count to 11 here, so definitely let me know in the comments if you can find all of them. All of the rings are super hard to image with any telescope, so seeing them so clearly here is very impressive. The brightest of them are visible in some Hubble images, like these recent ones, but the fainter ones have only ever been imaged by Voyager 2, which passed really close to the planet in 1986, and the Keck Observatory, which has advanced adaptive optics to produce great images by firing a laser into the sky. More on that in this video up here if you're interested. Let's take just a second to appreciate how far we have come. In 1986, Voyager 2 saw Uranus as an almost featureless bluish ball in visible wavelengths. Now, in 2023, JWST is using its infrared instruments to see the planet in incredible detail. The rings themselves are mostly made of space rocks and dust, along with a good helping of ice. They're also really nice because they surround the planet face on from our perspective, rather than say Saturn's rings from Earth which are side on. Uranus has more of a halo than a skirt. This is because unlike all the other planets, Uranus sort of rolls around the sun, rotating at an almost 90 degree angle from the plane of its orbit, its axis of rotation pointing at the sun. It takes Uranus about 84 years to orbit the sun, and it has extreme seasons that last half of that time. That's because it isn't rotating like the other planets do. So one side gets sun for half a year, and the other side is cold and faces space for that half. In this picture, we can see the northern side of the planet, including the bright white polar cap just here. Something we've never seen until now is a subtle brightening of the polar cap as you approach the North Pole. It's very subtle, but it's definitely visible. The sun is off to the right hand side here, illuminating the planet from off camera. In fact, a unique feature of Uranus is the appearance of this polar cap during summer, and it disappears when it stops receiving direct sunlight in autumn. We have no idea why this is yet, and hopefully further data might help us figure out exactly what's going on here. The bright spots here and here are clouds, likely connected to storms occurring on the planet as this picture was taken, and they're pretty typical to see in the Uranian atmosphere, especially in infrared wavelengths. We call the planet an ice giant because it's mostly made up of what we call icy materials. That includes water, methane, and ammonia. These are in some sort of hot and dense fluidy form in the atmosphere, and they swirl above a small rocky core of a planet below. This image used two wavelengths of light from the NERCAM detector. The shorter was 1.4 microns and has been colored blue, and the longer three micron data is colored orange. And when combined, we definitely get an overall blue effect, which is pretty typical of images of Uranus. 
As I mentioned earlier, Uranus has 13 known rings and 11 of them are visible here. Although the issue here is that they're actually very thin and bright enough in this image that some of them merge into a larger ring. The Zeta ring is labeled in the close-up. And this is a dusty ring that's actually the innermost ring of Uranus. And it's often one of the brightest. The other rings are named with either numbers or Greek letters. And we're expecting further JWST imaging to reveal the faintest, most outer two rings in the future. These faint ones were discovered by Hubble in 2007 and are dusty just like the Zeta ring. So it'll be cool to see them whenever they decide to make an appearance. If we zoom out a bit, we actually have a great shot of the planet too. I absolutely love this version of the image, seeing Uranus hang there with its nice bright rings. Notice that the planet and the rings are actually so bright that they're producing thick diffraction spikes, normally only produced by bright nearby stars in JWST images. You can just about see a star back here also producing spikes, and the rest of the background features a bunch of cool looking galaxy. It's actually incredible to see so many of these, especially when we remember that this was only a 12 minute exposure. In this wider shot, we can also see six of Uranus's 27 known moons. Most of the others are just too faint to be seen in the image, but we can see all the biggest ones. Titania and Oberon were the first moons discovered, and all of the moons are named after characters in Shakespeare's plays or characters that appear in a poem by a guy called Alexander Pope. All of the ones in this image are named after sprite or fairy type creatures. They were named this since Uranus was the Greek god of the air and sky, so naturally would be attended by sprites of the air. In fact, as you can see here, the moons visible here make up basically all of the mass of the moons, and the ones we can't see make up less than 0.1% of the total mass in moons around Uranus. It will be amazing to see longer exposures using more than two wavelengths in the future. And hopefully soon we'll complete our planetary family portrait of JWST images when we see Saturn too. JWST can't look at Venus, Mercury or Earth as they're too bright and would damage the detectors on board. So Saturn is the final planetary piece in JWST's solar system puzzle. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe if you enjoyed the video to really help the channel out. You can check out one of these videos if you want more. This one looks at the Neptune image in more detail and this one explains those adaptive optics that Keck uses to get really well resolved images, even though it's sat on Earth's surface and has to look through the pesky atmosphere. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!